This video is about active listening. Welcome to Consultations for Health, helping you progress in your communication skills to optimise the care of your patients. When gathering a patient history, it is not only important to use the right type and approach of questioning, but it is also vitally important you demonstrate you are actively listening to what the patient has told you. Using active listening techniques effectively will encourage your patient to expand and elaborate on the information they have told you. This is because you will be able to show that you understand and have listened carefully to what they have told you. This will build rapport and trust with your patient and should lead to a more effective outcome from the consultation. There are several components to effective active listening. However, fundamental is your ability to actually be fully present and active in the consultation. What I mean is you must be able to listen carefully and fully to what your patient is telling you and not have your mind focused on other activities, other patients or other duties you may have to perform. This will usually require prior organisation so you are prepared for each consultation you enter. It is important to remember that active listening requires both verbal and non-verbal communication to be in sync and responding appropriately to what the patient has said and the way that they have said it. Let's now watch a clip that demonstrates some aspects of active listening. So, how can I help you today? Well, I really want something all sorted out about this sickness I keep getting with my methotrexate. The sickness, you say? Yes, I just feel sick after I've taken my methotrexate for at least a couple of days. It's really affecting me going to work. I just, I just feel awful. So, taking methotrexate? Yes. Uh, and how are you getting on taking that, other than the sickness? Well, fine. I mean, I mean, I know I've got to take it, but I really don't want to because I know that I'm going to feel sick after taking it. Right. So you're taking it regularly, and it's making you feel sick for a couple of days after taking it. Yeah. And then it improves. Yeah, it does start to get better towards the sort of the end of the week, but the first couple of days are awful. Okay. And how long have you been taking the methotrexate? Um, about six months now. Right, and has it been the same all the time? Well, I mean, they upped my folic acid and it started to get better, but um, it then got worse again, and then they put me on something else, um, and that hasn't helped at all. So it's just it's just really starting to affect me now. Okay, so we've been on methotrexate for about six months, had folic acid that they increased the dose, which helped a bit, but that stopped being beneficial. Yeah. And then something else you mentioned. Lansoprazole, they said. They said that would help with the sickness, but I don't think it does at all. Okay, and how long have you been trying the Lansoprazole? A couple of weeks now. Okay, and seen any change? No, nothing at all. No, um, it just feels like I'm adding more and more pills in. And, and have you been taking that one? Yeah, regularly? yeah, I've been taking it, yeah. Okay, so we've got... The, the sickness with the methotrexate improved a bit with folic acid dose change, got worse, tried to lanzop for a couple of weeks, nothing happened. No. Okay. I just need to check whether there's anything else could be causing the sickness. Are you on any other medication at all? Um, I take the pill. You take the pill. And how long have you been taking that one? Years, yeah. Years. yeah. With no problems? No problems, no. no. Okay. And anything else changed recently? No, not that I can think of. No. No. And um, any other reasons you might think why you're feeling sick at the moment? No, it seems to be completely related to methotrexate. It's not like I've um, changed my diet or you know, anything like that. It just seems to be related to methotrexate. Okay. And how's your diet being with that? Well, because I, I try to eat really healthily, but when I feel sick, I just don't want to eat anything. So I end up sort of snacking on sweets and things like that because it seems to be the only thing I feel like I want to actually eat. So I'm not really very happy about that either. Okay, so not getting great meals. No, yeah. not for the, the not while I'm taking the methotrexate the first couple of days, and then it, when it improves, I then feel like I can eat again. But it's just those few days where I feel like I can eat very badly. Okay. The key aspects of active listening are paraphrasing, summarising, 
clarifying and reflecting. In everyday conversations, we use a range of verbal and non-verbal clues to indicate that we are actively listening. These include nodding your head, shaking your head, making supportive noises such as hmm, ah, mm-hmm. Sometimes we even use silence or pausing to allow both you and the person you're speaking to to reflect and think about what they're saying and they may then say some more or additional information. So the first key skill of active listening we're going to explore is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is taking a short section of what the patient has told you and putting it into your own words and saying it back to the patient. By putting it into your own words you are trying to demonstrate that you have understood what the patient has said and are not just repeating what they have told you themselves. This also gives the patient the opportunity to reflect on what they have told you and be confident that it is the message they intended to deliver. They may choose to add additional information or alternative information to what they had already told you. Another component of active listening is summarising. When gathering a patient history, it is important to use a summary to ensure that the patient is aware of what you have taken from what they have told you. This then allows you to think what you may need to do next, but also allows your patient to consider whether any additional or further information is required before you move on. Summaries, as the name suggests, should not be too long. Many people cannot retain long lists of information. Therefore, it's important to try and keep your summary to three to five points. Summaries can be used at any point in a consultation but they are particularly helpful at key transitions. At the end of your closing when you're agreeing your shared agenda, towards the end of gathering their patient's history to ensure that you've got the right information, and obviously towards the end of the consultation to sum up what has been agreed. Clarifying is an important skill to use to ensure that there are not misunderstandings throughout a consultation. Patients and healthcare professionals can use terminology that has meaning to them but may be misunderstood by other people. So when your patients say things like, I feel weird, or I have a dicky stomach, or I, my sleeping is unusual, it is important that you clarify the exact meaning of those words and phrases to ensure both you, the practitioner, and the patient have the same understanding. Finally, reflection or reflective listening is a skill that may require a little more practice than some of the other active listening skills. Reflective listening is more than just repeating what the patient has just told you. It is a short summary of that exact moment of the consultation. The practitioner is taking a very active role in the communication process and is taking a minute or two to consider what the patient's true concerns or worries are. In order to do this, the practitioner must listen carefully to what the patient has said and then form a hypothesis or reflect on what they may mean by what they have said. It's important that the practitioner uses different words to explain what the patient may mean. The patient will either confirm or disconfirm the practitioner's guess and elaborate in both instances by providing more information. While you can occasionally repeat what the patient has just said, parroting is often not very successful. Sometimes reflection takes the form of continuing the paragraph from where the patient left off. It is important to note that reflective statements are not questions. Your voice should not inflect upwards as if it's a question at the end, but should actually inflect downwards to make it clear it is a statement. From this short video, we have worked through some of the key components of active listening. These include paraphrasing, clarifying, reflecting and summarising. Using these skills will help you to effectively gain key information from your patients. They will enable you to build an effective rapport and ensure that you are conducting a person-centred consultation. Thank you for watching Consultations for Health. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter like our Facebook page and subscribe to these videos.